Hello, and welcome to the first edition, the very first edition of Larry Odie's segment on vinyl. Working towards the preservation of historical vinyl recordings. So what I do is I have sources where I can see vinyl. I have a specific source. And it's just one, a specific source where I can see what I'm looking at page after page after page. And sometimes I see what's very familiar, but since I'm looking at looking for historical recordings, I haven't a clue. I know some of the names, and I know some of the music, and I may not know the names or have a familiarity with the the music and so for this edition this very first edition of Larry O.D. segment on vinyl I, I purchased a lot that uh, consisted of seven or eight albums one was a double set and also came with a 45 so I count that in there and so let me run down to you what I got Steely Dan Gaucho 1980 the Commodore's Greatest Hits, 1978. The Pointer Sisters, Steppin', 1975. Minnie Ripperton, Perfect Angel, 1974. Richie Havens, On Stage, 1972. And this album was done on the label, the record label that he created that went by the name of Stormy Forest Records. And Luther Georgia, Boy Snake Johnson, the Muddy Waters Blues Band, 1968. Huddy Ledbetter, a.k.a. Leadbelly, Take This Hammer, 1950. Now, it is the last two albums that I'm going to talk about, so here we go. Luther, Georgia Boy Snake Johnson, the Muddy Waters Blues Band. I suspect this is Luther. On this album, Muddy Waters, lets the he doesn't stay, take front and center. He lets... The band do all the talking. So this features uh, Luther, Georgia Boy, Snake Johnson. On side two, it has Mofo Buford, Mojo Buford with the Muddy Waters Blues Band. And there's some other players here. Uh, Muddy Waters had a half brother, Otis Spann. And there are two more players that are listed here that. Uh, this the, this production seems to want to focus on, and it is uh, Sammy Langhorn on lead guitar and Francis Clay on drums. And once again, here's a photo of this uh, fantastic, fantastic uh, uh, assembly of blues players that were previously unknown to me. Of course, I knew Muddy Waters, but all these other uh, players I had no idea. This seems to be a promotional copy that it's got a cut down here on on the bottom and uh, it's on uh, an independent label called Douglas Records and uh, uh, distributed by Laurie Records and there are no dates on this album. Uh, for my research this is 1968 the numbers on it are uh, it's in stereo SD781, so you can look that up. And the other significant interesting thing about this album is some, you know, sometimes musicians do different tracks. We know them today as remixes and, and, and extended dance uh, tracks. In the ones that I've heard of this song, Long Distance Call, Side One, Is a story. It's a story of infidelity, where one of the characters is talking about what people are saying. Everybody seems to know, but him. But in the take that I've heard, or I am most familiar with, there are three players. There is the wife. There is the husband, who's being cheated on, and there's a little girl involved, and she focuses our enhances the fact that the the, the 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 husband is being cheated on but in in uh, in this album from 1968 it is missing the little girl so this is an original cut and then everything money did after that 
or when Muddy became the focus of the band. Because you have to remember, on this album, Muddy is not the focus. He makes it that way. He puts his band out front. But on further cuts, when he became the significant player, the focus, it is him actually doing the intro. On this, I believe it's Luther Georgia Boy Snake Johnson that does the in intro. And they are completely different. They are completely In fact, this one, I like this one better than the Muddy Water one. This is more lively. It's, uh, oh, it's also holler and response on the Muddy Waters that some of the, the Muddy Waters uh, take this, take this, uh, what was it, take this uh, long distance call. Uh, there is no holler and response. It's just Muddy Waters doing the intro. Okay. And then the middle part of the song, we go back to a talking. So we go from a talking intro into, in, in, into singing, and then we go back to the middle, and then it's more talking. It's just, it's fantastic. I, it's, it was, for me, it was an unbelievable find. You can get this on eBay, but for me, why it's rare is that you would have to know it exists, and I previously did not know. And there's so much that you don't know, and that's why we're here to get some of this that we don't know, we're not familiar with. The next one it was the one that was the deal sealer. You look at a lot of albums, say maybe five, six, or seven, and you can throw out two. Okay. Use them for target, target practice or frisbees. And then you'll see a couple in there. You might say, or I might say, well, I, I, it's worth it. Really, do I do this? If the lot is not significant enough for me to jump in, then I just disregard it. I don't want to clutter up landfills with records because that's all I would do is throw them out. I don't want them. I'll give you an example. You might have uh, Michael Jackson, and, and it will have I would want off the wall and bad, and it's going to give me Thriller. Well, I already have a copy of Thriller. Now, exactly, I wouldn't throw that out, but you get the you get what I'm feeling. There's albums. Uh, sometimes they pair the albums that they make no sense. They'll say it's blues and it's Eddie Arnold. So you know, I know what I'm looking for, and this is one of them. And I had no idea that this existed. And this is Huddy Ledbetter. Take this hammer. And Huddy, Huddy Ledbetter, A.K.A. Lead Belly, and it's a 10-inch album, and I had never seen a 10-inch album before. Now, I expect that I had, I can't really say I can't, but I had never seen a 10-inch like this with this significance, okay? This is on Folkway Records, okay, out of New York, and it, uh, it's called the uh, Huddy Ledbetter Memorial, copyright 1950. On the first side, we have uh, reels and blues, and on the second side, we have work songs and spirituals. There are 15 tracks total. Uh, Woody Guthrie is on this. Make sure I have that right. Woody Guthrie. Uh, he plays a 12-string guitar on this as well. And as I said, it's a 10-inch. Now, more interesting and significant uh, about this album is a little history about Huddy Ledbetter. But Huddy Ledbetter is the original street fighting man, as far as the music goes. He was a guy that you didn't want to get into it with because he would hurt you. Okay? He talked to talk, and he walked to walk. But he was favored by musicians and and uh, people in that the, the folk world. Uh, he was renowned. And he was invited, and he was led into that world, and he stayed in that world. Now, this album also was recorded. Another significant historical factor uh, about this album is that uh, Alan Lomax is what they call the editor. There is no producer here, and once again, there are no dates. Well, actually, on this one, there is a date, because this is a historical recording. This, uh, and, 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 and they had a recorder, and it, it was cumbersome, uh, uh, cumbersome. So, and, and they would put it in the back seat and they would go out, out uh, the low maxes, father and son team would go out into the countryside and, or the rural side, the rural areas, and they would record. They would hook the recorder up to a car battery and they would record these people right on their front porches. And without that, some of these works would have never, we would have never heard them. And this, this is one of them, although this isn't a countryside recording, but most possibly, uh, possibly was, was, uh, made in from a country or a rural side recording or, and made into a, a studio production. Uh, uh, some more information on this album. 
is that uh, this album is, 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 you can find it, I mean, on eBay, but it is a historical album. The uh, Library of Congress commissioned the Lomaxes to go out and find these musicians, musicians, these blues players, and the folk players. And so this particular one could be found at Yale, uh, the Yale Library, and uh, uh, and you would have to call them first if you wanted to check that out. And I'm pretty sure that you would have to be uh, uh, a student, but I'm not quite sure on that. But uh, that is uh, this is a historical find without a doubt. So uh, stay tuned. We're going to bring you some more historical recordings as soon as I find them. I will make I I, I I will listen and then I will give them to you uh, for your enjoyment so that you may also look for them and uh, pick them up and, and, and have them in your collection.